This is the last part of lesson 2.1. We're at 2.1c, multiplying integers, and we're also going to talk about the zero property of multiplication. Zero is neither negative or positive, and zero has no opposite. The zero property of multiplication states that any number multiplied by zero will equal zero. The product of zero and any number, regardless of if it's negative or positive, will be zero. To quickly review the rules for multiplication, it's actually for multiplication and division. When we have like signs, our answer is going to be positive. Two positives, they're like signs, our answer is going to be positive. We have like signs, a negative and a negative, our answer is going to be positive. This is for multiplication, and it also includes division rules. When we have unlike signs, the answer is negative. We need to multiply a positive 17 and a negative 4. When the factors have unlike signs, our product will be negative. We find the absolute values of the numbers and multiply them. The absolute value of a positive 17 is 17. It's 17 jumps from 0. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. It's 4 jumps from 0. We multiply the absolute values. 17 times 4 is equal to 68. We know, because it unlike signs and it's negative, we have a negative 68. We have to make sure to assign the correct sign to the product. If we were to have written a positive 68, we'd get it marked wrong. And we can model this problem on a number line by using repeated addition. We can draw 17 groups of negative 4 as 17 arrows, each 4 units long, beginning from 0 and each arrow pointing left. This is confusing for you. You can look in the description for a link of video 2.1a where we learned about this. Now we're multiplying a negative 6 to a negative 9. The factors have like signs, so our product will be positive. We multiply the absolute values of the factors. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. It's 6 jumps from 0. The absolute value of negative 9 is 9. It's 9 jumps from 0. We multiply the absolute values. 6 times 9 is equal to 54. We know the product is going to be positive. It's a positive 54. And we can model this problem on a number line by showing six groups of nine as six arrows, each nine units long, beginning from zero, and each arrow pointing right. We're multiplying a negative 23 to zero. One of the factors is zero, so our product is zero. Here, we're mu multiplying zero times negative seven one of our factors is zero, so our product is zero. It doesn't matter which factor is zero. The zero property of multiplication states that the product of zero and any number is zero. So I'm going to show you a couple of very cool rules. The amount of negative factors we multiply will determine the sign of our product. An even amount of negative factors will produce a positive product. We know these have like signs, so our product's going to be positive. Well, it's got an even amount of negative factors. It's got two. Two is an even number. We have a positive product. Here we have two negative factors. We have one positive, but we have two negative factors. We're going to have a positive product. Here we have four negative factors. We have a positive product. We can find each partial product from left to right. We have a negative 2 times a negative 4. We have like signs. It's a positive 8. Now we multiply the positive 8 times this negative 3. We get a negative 24. We multiply the negative 24 times this negative 2. We have like signs. It's a positive 48. We can look at this, ignoring the signs, using their absolute value, and say 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 times 2 is 48. There are four negatives, an even amount. It's going to be a positive 48. 
an odd amount of negative factors will produce a negative product. Here we have only one negative factor. And they have unlike signs, don't they? We have a negative 12, but we have one negative factor, so we know it's going to be a negative. Here we have three negative factors. Three is an odd number. We have a negative 2, a negative 4, a negative 1. There's a positive here, but we have three negative factors. We know the product will be negative. Negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. Positive 8 times a positive 5 is a positive 40. And a positive 40 times a negative 1 is a negative 40. Here we have five negative factors that are just all negative. We do negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. Positive 8 times negative 3 is a negative 24. Negative 24 times a negative 2, they have like signs, it's a positive 48. We multiply that by a negative 1, they have unlike signs, it's a negative 48. So we can find each partial product just multiplying from left to right. But we also know that if there's an odd amount of negative factors, 1, 3, 5, 7, odd numbers, an odd amount of negative factors, it will produce a negative product. It may help if we determine and write the sign of the product before multiplying two factors. This way, we will be sure our answer has the correct sign. We have one negative factor. Well, that's an odd amount, one. That means our product is going to be a negative. 5 times 4 is 20. It's equal to negative 20. Here we have two negative factors. Two is an even amount. So our answer, our product, is going to be positive. 5 times 4 is 20. It's a positive 20. We're finished with Lesson 2.1. We're going to move on to Lesson 2.2. And 2.2a is dividing integers. We're going to do the explore activity. So I hope you wrote down the even-odd rule in your notes. If not, you can go back and copy them and write them down. Remember, if there's an even amount of negative factors, it will produce a positive product. If there's an odd amount of negative factors, it'll produce a negative product. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great day. And I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye.